Organizations have services spread across platforms both on cloud and on-premise, and MQQ managers enable decoupling through asynchronous messaging with queues and channels. To allow performance tuning and service availability, there could be multiple instances of services processing the same messages. An MQ cluster provides workload balancing out of the box, which spreads messages across the cluster, meaning multiple services can process messages, reducing bottlenecks and enabling maintenance. By default, the cluster workload balancing is basically based on MQ channels, and because it works so well, it can seem like magic. Well, it's not magic, and it isn't even AI. It is all done by the cluster workload management algorithm. This algorithm runs when we do one of four actions. Open a cluster queue, put a message to a cluster queue, create a new message group, or reallocate messages when a channel goes down. IBM MQ also supports published subscribe interaction patterns using topics, where topic host routing works largely the same, but for this video, we'll focus on queues. So how does it work? It looks at a bunch of queue manager, queue, and channel attributes to decide where to send the message. The algorithm progressively narrows down the list of possible destinations. First, it removes destinations that connect outside the cluster. Then it selects channels and queues with the highest value cluster workload ranking attribute. In this case, the channel and queue ranked one are eliminated. If we want to only send messages to one site because we've got an active standby DCs, queues on one DC may be put disabled and they will be eliminated next. By default, the algorithm will use a local queue on the same queue manager if one is present. If instead the queue or QM has cluster workload use queue any, we look for non-local queues. If there are no local queue, then the algorithm splits evenly across the available channels. If there are two channels, each is selected 50% of the time. Any channels in an unready state, paused, stopped, initializing, are discounted. And channels could be made a primary or preferred by setting network priority on the cluster receiver with a zero to nine ranking. If there are still multiple options, we check the workload priority attribute on the queue and only keep those with the highest value. We can use a queue manager maximum cluster channels attribute to restrict how many are considered in the next part of the algorithm. For example, by setting the attribute to two, we only consider two channels. If there's still more than one queue, the least recently used is selected, creating a round robin style of routing. So now you know how the algorithm works and you know the levers you can pull to get the workload balancing to suit your organization's needs. And the best news is that in most situations, the defaults work just fine. So sit back, relax, and let the MQ magic work for you.